What is up everyone? Today I am going to be filming my bookshelf tour. Finally, I have wanted to film this video for so long, so I'm very excited to get to it today. I have three bookshelves, I have over 300 books, and a TBR cart, so there's a lot of stuff to go through. I'm going to show you guys everything I own on my shelves. It's going to be really fun, I'm excited, um, let's just get started because this is going to take a very long time. Okay. Okay, so first off, we're going to stop at this top, like, corner of my shelves. Um, but this, as you can see, is pretty much my Sarah J Mass book collection. I have here the Throne of Glass series, um, I have Assassin's Blade and the entire Throne of Glass series, and this really beautiful print from A Court of Books and Family. Um, it's a Manon and Dorian print, so it says, Hello, Princeling. And then on this side, it says, Hello, Witchling, and it is just the cutest thing. But as you can see, I have the rest of my paperbacks. I'm missing Queen of Shadows because my friend's borrowing it, but I do have it. Um, and then I have Tower of Dawn and Kingdom of Ash in hardcover. Then we move on to the Akatar series, which is another series that I love by Sarah J. Mass. Though I do love Throne of Glass better, I still really enjoyed these. Um, and I even have the like little short story thing, novella kind of thing, whatever you want to call it. Then we have my new baby, Crescent City, with my other babies, uh, Bryce and Danica, of course, because I just love them so much. But, yeah, this is my Sarah J. Mask collection, and hopefully it'll grow and I can get some cool, like, different editions, but that is it for right now. Moving down right below that shelf, we have a pretty random shelf already, because most of my shelves are random. But clearly we have some cruel prints going on. I have the Barnes Noble edition, so that's why they're in the black covers. I also have the Fake Rate dust jackets, which is just like really cute. And I love those. Then we have my Jude plushie from Fake Crate. Um, it has a body, I swear. She just has nowhere to go, so she just kind of chills there. It's pretty weird, but for now, that's like her home. I'm sorry. Um, and then we have this little cute little Cardin and Jude sticker with the Queen of Nothing cup from like fairy loot or something i don't remember moving on we have some lee bardugo so we have ninth house six of crows my favorite and of course you know we got kaz and matthias protecting my six of crows books i love them move this candle out of the way and we have language of thorns i'm letting my friend borrow shadow and bone so that's why it's not here but i do own it also and then the rest of the shadow and bone trilogy i kind of just put these here for now because i didn't have where to put them but it is The Shadow of the Wind, which was recommended to me to read by Callahan Skogman. If you haven't seen that video, I would check it out because it's pretty um, interesting. And then I have Eight Will Fall, which is just a new book that I've gotten recently and had nowhere else to put it. So there is that. I also have these like little bookmarks. So this is Cardin and Jude, and I love getting the magnetic ones and sticking them on like your strand of lights because it just looks really cool. Um, and so I have those two, and then I also have our lovely Kaz Brecker, which I think is just really fun. And he's just kind of chilling by the other Kaz right there. So I also have this Every Part of Me is a Delight sticker, which is from the Queen of Nothing tour when I met Holly Black. I have this little pin which says Scheming Great Schemes, which is also from the Queen of Nothing. Of course, I've got my Jude and Cardin little sticker, and this really cute Queen of Nothing mug. This next shelf is also pretty random, but starting over here, we have some classics that are leather bound. So as you can see, we have The Divine Comedy by Dante, we have Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, and then we have my beautiful copy of A Tale of Two Cities. This one is actually an Easton Press edition, and I am absolutely in love with it. Um, it is just a really gorgeous copy, and it's not that easy to find if you, um, are looking for an Easton Press. As you can see, it's an Easton Press, and it's just really a beautiful book that I absolutely adore. Then we have Daisy Jones and the Six, Becoming by Michelle Obama, which I have not got to read, but I really want to. Carry On and Wayward Son. I wish that this was in the hardcover, but it's weird trying to get your hands on a hardcover that matches fav that matches book two. It's just weird. Um, Girls of Paper and Fire and Going to Deception, which I didn't like too much. Also, we got Jonathan back there just chilling from Stranger Things. Um, I have a couple copies of Me Before You and then the second one, which is After You. I love these books. I love Jojo Moyes, so I 
kind of am a big fan of having those. I also have a print. This is Simon Snow and Baz from Carry On. I love them. Then I have the XY by Virginia Virgin, Defy Me and Restore Me. I do have Shatter Me. Haven't read it yet, but I want to. Um, it's on my TBR, so I will get to it. But then I have A Very Large Expansive Sea, which this cover is gorgeous, and it is my favorite book by Tehida Mafi, and I can't wait to read more of her works. Then we have some of the selection series, but we don't have number one, and I have never read it. So, there's that. So, we go down here um, to this little shelf. It's a square shelf. I hate that they don't go all the way across, but what am I going to do? Um, these are just some random paperbacks. You know, we have some fantasies, Game of Thrones, Name of the Wind, a Judy Bloom paperback. We have it, and then some random books that are books about books that I love, and um, some Toni Morrison, which I really want to read. Beloved, one day, I just haven't got to it. Next to that square shelf, this is where I keep all of my Barnes & Noble classics. I love these editions. They are um, really good if you want unabridged and like full, in-depth forewords and everything. I love these. This is my copy of Little Women. I just want to show you guys because I absolutely love Little Women. Um, and yeah, these are kind of in order for the ones I want to read next. Like, I want to read Great Expectations next, so on and so on. And I have a bunch of them, so I'm loving that I have a lot of these. Um, then we have just some Tolstoy, uh, another kind of leather-bound classic, and some illustrated ones because one day I want children and I will read these to them because nobody ever read me classics and I wish my mom did. <laughs> Down here is kind of hard to see, but we just have some movies, random bookish movies. Some are not bookish movies, but these are like a lot of the movies that I own and love. So there's that. So down here, this is a messy shelf. I'm so sorry. These are just more random classics that are um, little paperbacks, um, the mass market paperbacks. But also these at the bottom are books about writing and like books for writers and stuff. So I kind of really like to use those whenever I get stuck on something or need to quickly like reference something when I'm writing. But this shelf isn't that interesting, so I'm not gonna keep talking about it. Moving up here, we have one of my more favorite shelves. So this is the first shelf of my Shadowhunter collection, and as you can see, we've got all six of the Mortal Instruments, we've got the Infernal Devices, the Dark Artifices, and then some of the Novella Bind-Ups. But I love the way these spines line up. I think it is just the most gorgeous thing, and it makes me so happy to look at. But then I just have some really cute prints of random characters that um, are from the different series. As you can see, we've got Will and Tessa, we have got Jem and Will, we've got Mark and Tavi back there, and then we have Julian and Tavi, and Julian being the best father that he can be. And here is just a close-up of the spines because they are just absolutely stunning. This next shelf is also one of my favorites for sure. I have my hardcover copies. I don't own all the books in hardcover also, but I'm working on it. Um, and I just kind of like the way this looks. So we got um, like the Red Scrolls, another novella bind up down there, and the Shadowhunters Codex and everything, and then some random hardcovers. So can't wait to get all of the collection, um, but I don't so far. As you can see, we have my beautiful gem in his mug in his spot, um, and we have this. 10th anniversary clockwork angel which i love it has the gorgeous artwork in it um and we have a lot of cordelia uh <laughs> we have a lot of cordelia fandom going on because i love her but yeah moving on down to the shelf we just have a another random variety of series but we have over here renegades and arch enemies and supernova by marissa meyer and then the like cinder series which is also a really good series Heartless, my paperbacks of Mockingjay, I mean, The Hunger Games, I don't know why I said Mockingjay first, um, and then the Red Queen series by Victoria Aveyard. Down here in this little square, we have some random uh, paperbacks that I don't really care about. I've read most of these, like The Lightning Thief, um, Where She Went, but all the other ones I haven't got to, so I just keep them down here because they're not like a top priority, but I, of course, have to keep them. This next square over is pretty much the same. I have read To All the Boys I've Loved before and a few others of these, but most of them are just ones that I need to get to, but they're not priority. Then I just have this random mug of Stranger Things characters just <laughs> chilling in there for no reason. Down here, we will find my Twilight series by Stephanie Meyer. I have a super well-loved copy of Twilight. I This book is beat up. I have read this book 
plenty of time. I have my name written in it, everything. Um, New Moon also, I really, really love New Moon, which is not a popular opinion, but I do. Um, and I don't even have the matching set, which is really funny, because I'm a person who likes to have them matching. But for Twilight, I guess I just didn't care, but I absolutely am the type of person who loves these too much to get rid of them. Um, I even have the Life and Death, which is like the, um, where Bella and Edward are switched places, and it's weird. Couldn't get through it, but whatever. <laughs> Also very random, have Looking for Alaska by John Green, and this is a signed copy of a mini Looking for Alaska by John Green. This next square has some pretty random books as well um, that I have not read, except I have read a separate piece. I read it for school, like in English, in high school, and I absolutely love a separate piece by John Knowles. It is such a good book. I, I literally love it so much. But yeah, I've also read this March trilogy. This is my only um, graphic novels that I own. And I had to read them for history class, but it is a graphic novel set um, about the civil rights. And it's really interesting, and I really enjoyed it. I have this really cool copy of The Little Prince. I think this is very old, very random, kind of dirty, but it's vintage, and I love it. I love The Little Prince. Now we're on my last shelf. This is kind of an overview, but I'm going to get a little bit closer. And as you can see, I have some Alexander Bracken, who I absolutely love. We have Passenger, which I have not read, and I really need to get to that because I absolutely adore Alexander Bracken. Um, but we have The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding. This book is a middle grade, kind of scary-ish kind of book, and it is so good. It's a fantasy. It has some spooky elements. It has some witches. It's really good for middle grade. Um, and if you have any like little cousins or you have kids, I would definitely try to get them to read this because it's a really good middle grade series. Um, and then we, of course, have my Darkest Minds set of paperbacks. This is clearly a well-loved copy. It's pretty be up, as you can see. But I absolutely love The Darkest Minds. Um, and I have some hardcovers, too, that my friend Caitlin gave me. So I got all these hardcovers for free, and that was absolutely so nice of Caitlin. I love her. Um, but then we have The Darkest Legacy, which also goes kind of with The Darkest Minds. Um, and then Serpent of Dove is just here because it doesn't really go anywhere else, but it's the same size as The Darkest Legacy, so I figured I would just put it there. Then we kind of have my J. Kristoff shrine. Um, I have a lot of things about Mia Corvier, as you can see. I have her in the Fake Rate plushie, I have her on that Illumicrate mug, and I have her in these cards, which I also have one of Trick and one of Ash. I don't really like Ash, but I guess I will show you guys her. Look, she knocked everybody else down because she's selfish. I don't like her. Okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, we have Nevernights by Jay Kristoff. I am not, <laughs> I do not have Nevernight. My friend is borrowing it, but I do own it. So that's where Nevernight would go. And then I have Obsidio and Gemina back there. Um, I just recently got Illuminae, so I'm going to have to move these and make room. But for now, that is that is that shelf. <laughs> Now, moving down, we are at my Harry Potter shelf, which is one of my absolutely favorite Harry Potter shelves. This is just kind of an overview, but I will take you guys a little bit closer. First off, before I move these little guys out of the way, I have all of these magnetic character bookmarks. We have Jenny, Neville, Professor McGonagall, Luna, and then we have like a little cover of the stone, the chamber, uh, the prisoner, and the goblet, which is just so cute. I absolutely love these little bookmarks. Now I move those over for a sec, but up here we have some plushies of Hermione, Ron, and Harry, which are really cute and I love them. Um, and then we have my Fantastic Beasts and Crimes of Grindelwald screenplays. Over here we have my Harry Potter mug and some more little plushies. I don't know why I don't have Ron in that one, but I will get him. Um, but we do have some Harry Potter glasses as well. Tales of Beetle the Bard, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And then we have a little Draco right here. So cute. Back here, we have my hardcover Harry Potters in the U.S. edition, and a really cute bookmark in all of my wands. These bookends that I have are so cute. I found them on Depop, and I love them. So this one says Pierre Totem, and then this one says Locomotor, if you can see that. And I love them. They're this, like, shiny gold-looking metal, um, and they have the Hogwarts, like, little warrior knights that defended the castle in Deathly Hollows at the Battle of Hogwarts, and I get emotional looking at them. They are supposed to go, like, sideways whenever you, um, need to hold up your books, but I don't have room for that, but once I have a house and a real library, you know, 
I'm taking these babies with me and they are going to protect my books. But I just love them being on the shelf because I just feel like they are protecting my books. So back here, this is... <laughs> so back here, this box, if you're wondering. Um, this is Harry, but on the other side of it has the entire Harry Potter collection in paperback. And it's the 20th anniversary edition covers. They're really cute. Um, they're like black and white. I'll probably put a picture if I can find one of what the covers look like. Because I don't feel like turning it around right now. But this box sleeve that it comes in is so adorable. And finally, as you probably saw, this is my probably most prized possession now, especially when it comes to Harry Potter. But this is my first edition, first printing of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, the UK version. It has this really reflective kind of sparkly gold um, embossing on the front. This really cool um, image, this really cool image on the front and then JK Rowling's um, in printed signature, um, and then it's, and then as you can see, this is a first edition, so this isn't the most rare Harry Potter book that you can find out there, um, but it is a little bit more hard to get your hands on, and it will run you like 40 to $100, depending where you find one at. Luckily, one came into the bookstore that I work at, and I snatched it up as soon as I could because it is not um, something that you will find every day, but I absolutely needed it as a giant Harry Potter fan. I knew I had to have it, so that is why I bought it. <laughs> Moving on down this shelf, we have a really fun little shelf. It's pretty colorful. I actually like the way this one turned out, but... Um, yeah, this is an overview. I have Anna and Kristoff over there protecting my books and playing the banjo. Um, but starting over here, we have Cinder. Um, this is the new cover, which is the really cute pink one that I love. I don't have the rest of them, so I keep it down here, and it just looks better on the shelf than it would with the black covers, but it just stays here for now. It's stuck. Okay, there we go. Um, the Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, which I did read and I did actually enjoy, um, even though Mackenzie Lee has turned out to be a little bit controversial, but I read it a long time ago and I don't really want to get rid of it because, um, it was actually a really cute story. I know a lot of people had problems with it, but I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, and then we have the With the Fire and High and Internment. These are two gorgeous hardcovers that I want to read so bad but have not gotten to. Then we have Scythe and Thunderhead. I have read these. They're pretty good. Um, I just need to read uh, The Toll, but I haven't bought that one yet. So um, then we have Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, which if you know was my first read of 2020, and I gave it five stars because I really enjoyed it. Um, and then we have They Both Die at the End, some Aaron Morgenstern. I have not read this. I need to. Also, I've not read this by Ransom Riggs. Um, Miss Peregrines, I'm so sorry. Um, Dear Martin by Nick Stone. Please read this book. It is an absolutely phenomenal book. It's super short. You will finish it really fast. And it's just a very impactful read. Lies in Her Monsters. Um, this one was pretty good too. I read it in a day. Then we have Everything, Everything. And this one's also a star. Love me some Nicola Yoon. Let me tell you. Then we have The Hate You Give and Only Come Up by Angie Thomas. Love her. Will buy anything by Angie Thomas. Um, this is actually the collector's edition that is gold and it's shiny and super beautiful and gives star justice. I love that. Then we have some more random books. Uh, the Way I Used to Be is a really good contemporary and also this is where it ends. If you excuse me, Anna. Um, it's really good too. And there are my just banjo boyfriend and girlfriend <laughs> just chilling there. Up here we have some more Polaroids. That one is from King of Scars. We have um, Eleven from Stranger Things in a Funko form. This one is from An Ember in the Ashes. And then that one back there is from Stalking Jack the Ripper. Moving down to this little square, we have some random hardcovers that are just some fantasies. Um, also, we have that adult novel by J.K. Rowling that nobody has pretty much ever read, in, including myself. But maybe one day I'll give it a shot. But yeah, we have some Divergent and some other books that I have not read, like Sky in the Deep and To Kill a Kingdom, but I really want to. Also want to try out Riley Sager. I just don't know if I will enjoy her. She's kind of like a mixed author. Is that a boy? Is Riley Sager a boy? I'm sorry if that's a boy. I actually don't know, but I really want to read those. Moving over, there is again just some random hardcovers that I have not read. If you see any of these... I, I mean, I have read Turtles all the way down and The Fault in Our Stars, but if you see any of these other ones that I should read, please let me know so I can get to them. But, oh, I've also read One of Us is Lying. 
that one's pretty good, but not as good as everybody hyped it up to be in my opinion, but still. So there's those and my Trio shelf mug, which has some random things inside it. Down here is kind of cool, kind of not cool. These are actually all of my extra copies of Harry Potter that I own. Um, and fun fact, these are all just the first books. Like this is the UK edition of the Philosopher's Stone. Um, random things, like I said, an extra copy of Hunger Games, Renegades, two extra copies of City of Bones, and an extra signed copy of The Darkest Legacy. Why do I have all of these? I don't know. <laughs> but, oh, here's another random edition of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I absolutely just have an obsession with collecting the first book, apparently. But then we have the Chronicles of Vladimir Todd, and I had nowhere else to put these, and it hurts my heart because the Chronicles of Vladimir Todd by Heather Brewer is such a good middle grade series. I can reread this in, like, any time of the day, any time of the year. These are just so good. If you have never heard of the Chronicles of Vladimir Todd by Heather Brewer, please pick them up. It goes from ninth grade, or it goes from eighth grade all the way up to twelfth grade, and it is a five book series, and it is just so good. I mean, look at this cover. Like, look at these covers. Tell me your middle grade self was not missing out on these Harry, I mean, on was not missing out on these vampire books because literally look at them they're so gorgeous i just i just love that series so much okay i'm gonna stop so in this corner i actually have a random bucket filled with harry potter memorabilia um and i also have the harry potter and the sorcerer stone and harry potter and the chamber of secrets the illustrated editions but i just have a bunch of like random figurines and things like this and a wallet of the marauders map and a bunch of harry potter things that are not necessary but i keep them in this basket just because i know i will not want to get rid of it finally this last little square right here is where i keep my religious books this isn't as big of a collection as i would want but i am just slowly buying books that i like um that have to do with like um, religion and I'm Catholic in case you didn't know but I do have a couple Catholic Bibles and then some Sadie Robertson things she is just a Christian speaker and I love the way that she um, has wrote some books they're actually pretty good um, and then I have a little crucifix down here that I just don't know I think I won this so I just keep it here so I also just have some like prayer cards some clinging crosses to hold on to when you want to pray some random little booklets uh, a rosary and um, I have this pamphlet from when I led a prayer vigil for a very sweet boy whose name was Ryan. Um, he was in our youth at church and he passed away last year, which was very sad and we miss him all the time. But um, I just keep that for memories because, um, like I said, we all miss him and it was um, very sad. <laughs> so that was all the books on my shelves, but now I'll quickly show you guys my books on my TBR cart. So... First of all, let me just show you guys. They don't even all fit. I have to keep some up here, like the Raven Boys, a random paperback. I have my Hunger Games hardcovers back here. Um, and like I said, I have Illuminate. I just need to figure out where to put it, and I want to read it. So that stays up there. Um, then we have these. These are just some hardcovers that I own but have not read. So I haven't read any of these, obviously, because they're on my TBR cart. But um, I just haven't got to these. <laughs> But I have just not gotten to any of these yet, and I really need to. Um, here's some more. I have, like, a uh, Dark Shade of Magic, which I've heard a lot of things about. Really need to get to the Poet X, like, really bad. I accidentally, no, actually DNF, frankly, in love. I will try it again one day, but I don't know. Um, Kingdom of Souls by Raina Baron. Uh, this one's actually signed, which is pretty cool. Caravelle and Solo. Finally down here we have the last shelf. Here's Shatter Me, which I really want to get to. Stalking Jack the Ripper, Number in the Ashes, some more Holly Black. Um, this one is by Lodi Iver. It's called The Violet Theory. She's an independent author. You can find her on Twitter and Instagram. She's awesome. I need to get the I need to get to that one and review it for her. Um, and then a few others. So yeah. So at the top of my bookshelf we have all my Harry Potter memorabilia. I'm not really going to go too in depth on it because I have done that in another video which I will um, link if I remember to but this is a lot of my Harry Potter memorabilia and I just love all of it so much and as you can see I keep it at the top of all three of my bookshelves and it looks really cute up there. <laughs> <laughs> 